Welcome to our special Three Kings Sunday worship experience. Know that wherever you are and whoever you are in this journey of your life, you are welcome here and a place where God is still speaking. We, we thank God for the Christ child and for the hope, for the peace, and the joy, and the love that is coming and is brought to the world. Let us pray. Loving God, Emmanuel, as we enter into the new year, we give thanks to you for how you have blessed us in the past year and for what you will lead us into the days ahead. Grant that we may walk the one morning at Bethlehem, and that our worship and our praise may bring to him and to you and to the Holy Spirit the honor and glory due your most holy name. Bless this gathering of your people, presence, and feed us and inspire us in body, mind, soul, and spirit. Amen.
we gather in the light that was before us, is now, and never will be. We gather in the light that is God's continuing gift. We gather in light that is our own, emerging anew each day. God of light and love, in this very moment, the star still beckons. Gather us and let the star call us anew, ways of healing and hope, restoration and renewal, as we discover again Christ's call to discipleship. Amen.
who dwells within time and beyond time, hear this prayer. If I have failed to perceive you when you have appeared in the face of a friend, if I have neglected to feed you when you have come with the hunger of a stranger, if I have not embraced you when you have sought me out of, out of a sister or brother's poverty, if I have not laughed and played with you when you greeted me with the delight of a child, forgive me. Open my eyes, my hands, my arms, and my heart to know your appearing and to celebrate the flesh-shaking mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. Make my heart a swelling place ready to receive you in the event and even the bleakest of spaces to delight at your appearing even as the animals who made welcome for the birth of one girl. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. This morning the Gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. The visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and we come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. Calling together all the chief and the priests and the scribes and the people, King Herod inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people in Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him, pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and they paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own home by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Every Sunday I like to begin the sermon with a joke, as you well know. Sometimes it's funny and other times it's challenging. This morning I thought it, I better not say a joke about the three kings because they're sitting right here. <laughs> I won't take a chance well to the house. How does this journey of these three kings, these three people from over 2,000 years ago relate to us today? Humanity likes to lift them up, that these people were like no other. They had special gifts and a special calling from God, but nothing like we could have, us mere humans. These were three chosen people. But how does their journey relate to us, to you and me this morning? Let's find out. <coughs> Let's take a closer look at this gospel text from Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, these wise men came from the east to go to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star rising in the sky. We have come to pay him. Ah! These men, these people, they were seekers of truth weren't they? But aren't we? Aren't we seekers of truth just like them? 
Their destiny was to connect with the Son of God, sharing, giving back their gifts, their special gifts, to connect with the divine light that God sent to the world to save humanity from itself. But is that not our calling? To connect with our special gifts that we're invited, invited to give back to the King, to the baby Jesus. How and in what way are we searching? People come to me as a pastor, they I'm searching for God. I'm searching for God. And I tell them, God is lost. God's right here with us in our midst. The divine lives within us, that spark, that light. But how and in what ways are we searching? Have we gotten sidetracked on our journeys to our own personal Bethlehems? A star, a star, way up in the sky with a tail as big as a pie, with a tail as big as a pie. A star. But when King Herod heard this, we heard it. He was frightened. And all of Jerusalem with him, not just him, but all of Jerusalem was frightened, weren't they? and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, and he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. But let's take a closer, deeper look at this. King Herod called all together, all the chief priests and scribes. And I love that scriptures because they reveal to us that the journey of connecting with the divine, we're not on that journey alone, are we? He reached out no matter what his motivation, but was through community to travel the path he did. The great King Herod sought assistance in his search for Jesus, and that we do have in common. He sought assistance from those around him in his spiritual community. Yet when he heard about the baby Jesus, he was frightened, and that puzzled me so much. And I thought to myself when I reflected on his text, what was he so frightened of? What were all the people so frightened of? The prophets had foretold what was coming, and they knew that the Messiah would still would soon arrive, but they were frightened, scared. What were they afraid of? Were they afraid that they might just have to step out of the boat, out of their familiar and comfortable lives, and they might just have to take a risk in a new life in a new way? Something different. But aren't we frightened of change too? Boy, we run from it. But they were frightened. We become frightened. We avoid change like the plague. Yet it happens anyway, doesn't it? Can we stop it? Can we prevent it? Changes in our lives? Have you ever heard the phrase, the only thing constant is change? That's true. There's a man named Herak with us of Ephesus, and it was 500 years before Christ. He was a Greek philosopher, and he's known for his doctrine of change being central to the universe. Very wise. There's all kinds of hundreds of writings of him, but his focus was that change is vital. Change is constant. Change is central, a central part of the universe of each of our lives and humanity. This is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. Star shows up again, doesn't it, in our lives. That's from the Gospel of Man of the Mancha. <laughs> <laughs> to seek Jesus was not only the destiny of the three wise people, it's our destiny. That's how this gospel text speaks to us today, this morning. Then Herod sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go, go, and search diligently for the child. When I read that, I thought about the journey itself. But who leaves on a trip without the idea of the destination? They knew what their destination was. We know what ours is to become into the children of God and the spiritual freedom that God invites us to. But what was their spiritual encounter?
attention? What's our spiritual attention? What's our plan? How do we maintain our spiritual lives along the way? Where do we stop and rest? Where do we share a meal along the way? On our journeys, on our search for the divine? Where do we find Jesus? Where do we find Jesus? One of my favorite cartoons is there's a living room and there's two people from church with a suit and tie at the door knocking and the lady opens the door and she, they said, have you found Jesus? Well, he's hiding behind the curtains in the living room. <laughs> I love that. And I think about, was he afraid of the people knocking at the door? Or was he there and she didn't realize that he was a central part to live with her? an incredible theological statement it makes. Maybe we need to look behind the curtain. But this text calls us to think about where we put our focus reflects that for which we search. Where we spend our time reflects that which is important to us. Where we put our energy reflects that which we consider important. God, as Jason expressed on Christmas Eve here, must be at the center of all that we do. Not receiving leftovers. We don't serve a leftover God. If we have time left over, if we have resources, if we feel like we have some spiritual gifts left over, God must be at the center of everything that we do. We get what we expect. That's true. Do we receive? Do we get what we expect? A few years ago, there was a study done in the hospital. There was a thoracic surgeon, and he was intrigued by how pain relief works. Because in thoracic surgery, they have to go in through the sides and through the back, and they perform surgery on your heart, your lungs, or your esophagus. But what he was intrigued by, this particular surgeon, and he decided to do a study, was the delivery of pain medication. So he took a group of people, and for 50% of the patients, he had where he would come in and deliver the pain medication directly to the patient. For the other 50% of the people, the patients, he would have the nurses put the medication into the uh, IV bag so it was delivered without any special you know, awareness or it was just delivered to the patient to keep them pain free. What's interesting in the study and the results was that the people who received the pain medication directly from the doctor had an incredible, significant, less amount of pain than the other 50% receiving the same medication. And the reason being is they were expecting the medication and it worked. It worked. Their psyche had so much to do with it. They know they were being receiving the medication and the pain would slip away. They tried it with other surgeries and other patients and he found out that it was absolutely true. We receive what we expect. So if we expect to live a pain-free spiritual life because of Jesus Christ, we will receive that. But if we expect a bumpy road with twists and turns at every corner and all these things and all this, it's going to be a life of struggle and challenges and all these things. That. So our affirmation this New Year's Eve is that Christ be at the center of all that we do and all of who we are. That Christ take away our pain. Let us live in spiritual freedom. Such a gift. What we're expecting, we receive. So how does all this relate to the three kings and the three wise people? For us today and this morning, we need to leave here asking what are we searching for? 
we'll learn that when we find it, it may just change our course. The wise men were instructed by mankind to return and report to Jesus, where to uh, King Herod, where Jesus' whereabouts were. But when we truly connect with the divine, it just very likely may send us in an unexpected path. And trust me, it does. In a path we can't even imagine when we follow, when we search. And one which will result in grace filled. It'll result in a bountiful and a blessed result. Amen. Love incarnate, love divine, star and angel gave the sign.
Christ for all of them. Our present day wise man, wise person, we're thankful for you, Howard, in the ministry. Here at the United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale, all are welcome at this table. This table is a special table here at this church. All who hunger to know God, who they want to experience Jesus, are invited to come forth to experience the divine right here in this place. Let's let us pray. O oh, Holy God, we come before you in this time this Christmas tide, remembering that you have given to us the gift of your Son, Jesus. We pray that you allow us to remove our sins, to release our sins, to release all the things that would block us from taking you into our own hearts. For as we have said in the great carol of Little Down in Bethlehem, Child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us this day. Amen. We just celebrated so many Christmas and Advent and Seasons meals, but today we experience a different meal, a special meal. We celebrate a meal, we remember a meal that was held over 2,000 years ago, where Jesus gathered together at the table with his friends and his disciples. Relatives and more. And during that meal, that Passover meal, he takes the bread from the table. He gives thanks for it and he blesses it. And as he breaks it, he says to those gathered, This is my body to be broken for each one of you. For all humanity, take and eat and remember me. In like manner, after they had supped, he took the cup. He gave it to them. He blessed it and said, Take and drink you all of this. This cup is a new covenant that I give to you, a new covenant of grace, of peace, of hope for all humankind. Take and drink, for this is my new covenant of love. Amen. Let us pray, loving God, we thank you for these sacred elements of the earth that you created. We thank you for the grain and we thank you for the grape. We ask your blessing upon these elements so that they become for us here today the essence and presence of Jesus Christ himself. Thank you for blessing us so, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
your journey. Thank you for being an example to us for our journey today, over 2,000 years later. Bless you on your continued journey, and thank you, God, for the gift of this example to us. our worship service and we hope to see you in person one day we at the united church of christ fort lauderdale are an open and affirming church that believes in equality for all we have many ministries that reach out to the needs of those in our community and there's always something here for everyone to be involved in we believe that god is still speaking and that our ministry outreach can only continue its vital mission in bringing people to christ through the support of people just like you. Please visit our website, uccftl.org, for more information about us, to submit a prayer request, or even donate to the church if you have been moved by the Spirit. You will help us in God's work in our ministry outreach. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we hope to see you next week. May God's peace and love be with each and every one of you. And remember, God is still speaking.